I never thought when I sat down and ordered the meatballs that, that, that this would come into my life that evening. And it did. And this just being one wild tale of a little red Les Paul that turned out to be a gem. What I'm holding is a guitar called Lazarus. And I first met this guitar in this restaurant, um, Baroni's. The Hollywood Gun Club is something that uh, Howard Lease and my friend Rick Gould uh, started. And the thing has kind of escalated into this gigantic uh, three to four times a year uh, dinner that uh, we, we host here at Baroni's. We get everyone from Albert Lee to Seymour Duncan to, you know, I, all the characters are, 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 are represented. So it's a guitar geek hang and some, some good Italian food. And on a particular evening in December of 2019, um, a case and a, a cherry red, almost candy apple red, husk of a guitar shows up a few months before, maybe a month before I first saw this guitar. Um, my friend David Neely, who runs a very successful repair shop in Hollywood, posted on Instagram a picture of this red thing with some parts. What is that? You know, because the guitar collecting world, it's like a sewing circle, okay? It's like, it's the most gossip-laden world you've ever entered into. Next thing you know, I see David Neely walk in here, and he's got a brown stone case. And I go, David, is that that red thing? He goes, yeah, I brought it. I wanted to see if you, you know, like, take a look at it. I'm like, great. As I started to look at it, literally right here in this very spot, there was a table and some meatballs and spaghetti and some red wine and a guitar and a bunch of people around it trying to figure out what it is. And the few things that, that I noticed in the room that evening was the holly veneer, the factory large frets, starting to date itself. If it was a 58, you'd have, you'd have small frets. The fact it was factory large frets, it starts to pinpoint the era in which this thing was built. You know, there was 120 people in this room, all kind of chiming in, and I was like, I think, what I'm seeing is, you know, indelibly linked to a 58, 59, or, an, or possibly an early 1960 Les Paul. The next day I made an appointment with David Neely to go see the parts. And as soon as I looked at the pots, it was the seventh week of 59. And I was like, well, if it acts like a duck, looks like a duck, pretty sure at this point that it's a 59 Les Paul or a late 50s Les Paul. You know, and I sit there at my house twisting this thing going, show me the flame, show me something, show me a seam, you know what I mean? And I was like, oh God, I may have just bought a very, very expensive piece of firewood, you know? I sent it to my friend Kim LaFleur at Historic Makeovers. And I go, Kim, what do you think? Let me know what you think. Either way, let's, let's finish this thing, you know, refinish it obviously and put, put the parts back on. So the first picture he sent me was, a, he, had, he knows what he's looking at and knows what we all wanted to see was a center seam. Once I knew it was a center seam, I was like, this is a burst. This is a sunburst Les Paul. Next thing you know, he starts taking the paint off and this beautiful flame maple top shows up. I must have done something very generous that day to be this lucky. So we called it Lazarus because this 59 Les Paul that was literally hiding in plain sight has risen from the oblivion, it literally risen from the dead and now has played almost every night with me on stage. It's got a great neck pickup, it's got a great bridge pickup and it takes a good picture. I've seen pictures, I'm like, wow, like if you just crop me out of the photo, you have like a classic there, you know? I've been promising David Neely uh, for over a year and a half that I would bring the guitar in. When we decided to shoot this video here in Los Angeles, I was like, well, Lazarus has got to come out and David's never seen the guitar. He's only seen pictures of it, but to, have, to see him hold it is great because he was really, a huge part of this story of me procuring it. It just kind of bookends this journey that we've been on for two years. What's up, Dave and Neely? How you doing, my friend? Give me a hug. How you doing? Good to see you. You too. So, as promised, I know it took a year longer than I anticipated, 
So Lazarus has has risen. Has risen. Back to where it was born. You're the last one to see okay. it. And there I it mean, is. I saw it on the Opry show and everything. That's right. And there you go. Wow. It was not like this when it was here. It's it's, it's survived so much at this point, nothing's gonna stop it. But you know what? It's still got the the original vibe to it. Right. It lives again. Oh, you're lucky man, Joe. <laughs> this is why I was really excited about, um, you know, doing this year's um, uh, Joe B. Epiphone um, as Lazarus because it's such a, you know, it's such a great story and we wanted to make a, a model that's, you know, accessible to everyone at a price point that, that um, you could buy it and go out and gig with it. It looks and feels like the original guitar. So let's check this out. We're gonna do the switch. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lazarus, the Epiphone. And, you know, I've really been a fan of these bur Burst Bucker uh, pickups. Um, they, they work great in the Epiphones. We've been using them um, on, on, on a lot of models, and they sound great out of the box. And, you know, this, this wide, you know, center seam maple top is very unique uh, for Epiphone. So, so it's wood, but they did pick out some really, really nice tops that, that are very similar. You know, as these things age in, uh, they're going to start looking really nice. The neck shape's very similar to the original guitar, smaller. It's, it's, it's not a slim tapered neck, it's just smaller. So it's like a shrunken 59 neck, which is very similar to the, the original guitar. Um, not all 59 necks were huge. Um, some were smaller, some were bigger than others. Again, these were handmade instruments. These are still handmade instruments. As you play it in, it's going to look really, really cool. Um, and as you can see on the film, it really does kind of accentuate the wood. And all of them are a little bit different. Um, I like the bridges, I like the pots that they're using now. And of course the burst buckers um, really have become a, a standard for Gibson. It's gig ready. And uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great tool to have in, in whether you're playing out live in the studio, or just having fun at home, you know, annoying your neighbors, which is what I've been doing for the last year and a half. It's, it's been great. It's a cool opportunity to own a little piece of the, the story of this, this guitar, you know. And it's a part of uh, guitar collecting folklore at this point. I'm like, oh my God, you know, can a, a, a red guitar uh, turn into, you know, a holy grail? And in this case, it did. How's that? All right, let's go eat. <laughs>